Okay, so Fitting Caterpillar has invited us down to their technology display here in Surrey. We're going to be showing off our solar light tower, kind of introducing it. It's all, this event is all about this solar light tower to be able to show it off for us, tell people how it works, show what it does, and we're also going to check out some of the other cool technology they got, like remote control, excavators, dozers, all that kind of cool stuff. So this is our light tower that uh, we make and exclusively license to Finning Caterpillar. Now, these are one of these things that what you expect when you're starting out making a product and what you end up with is very different in terms of how you're going to market it. See, when we came out with this thing, we wanted to sell it on the fact that it was going to save a lot of money on fuel. There's no fuel, that no motor, it's just 100% off solar. So we thought, cool, cool, that's how we'll sell it. Once we actually did the testing and we got those customers out there, they told us that like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't give a shit about the 30 liters of fuel at most that a light tower consumes. The big selling feature was that it's quiet is there's no noise on site. You don't have to run a generator when you're running as a power source. Like right here, this shack is running a generator because they don't have extension cord long enough for us to plug into. But all day long, we've been sitting here talking, voices have been low, loud because we've all been talking over this little generator. And you don't even notice how annoying it is until those customers have said that, yeah, once we got rid of those generators on site, we could talk normally. And like now, the people that use it hate going back to generators. So noise pollution on site. It was a safer working environment because they could hear better. There was less pollution on site. It was interfering with neighbors for noise. Like people weren't complaining about the noise as much. That was a selling feature I never even thought of when we were making it out. And then on top of that, something I didn't realize is that fueling. There, people can work with these near water sources. So if you're working near a river or a fish bearing stream or a wetland, there's always a concern if you got some guy filling up that he spills and he's filling it, or you get an oil leak and it contaminates that water source. Major fines, huge cost to remediation. Honestly, you spill three liters of fuel on the ground, you could buy four light towers for the cost that it takes to remediate that. So that became a huge feature that we didn't think of. It was, it, it's really kind of cool how you do it. And then they came up with these zero emission vehicle mandates. You need to have so much of your fleet to be zero emissions, no tailpipe emissions at all in order to bid on this contract, well, what do you go do? Buy an F-150 Lightning for $120,000? You could buy five, six light towers for that same price. All of a sudden now you have five, six vehicles, zero emissions. So they were hitting on that. These are those things like we thought we'd go in there, we were gonna just sell it on the ROI of fuel savings. Look, you buy this, it's the same price as a diesel light tower, but you're not gonna spend any on fuel and much less on maintenance. Turns out they didn't even care about that. We had to sell it on the lack of noise on site, the lack of pollution, uh, environmental impact on water and all that, and on zero emission vehicles. Like it's just, it's kind of funny how that changes as you grow and what you learn once you actually get a product in the field and why taking that customer feedback is actually so important. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Okay, this excavator behind me in this fenced off area is fully remote control. So it has no operator in the cab. The guy running this is actually in the trailer. I'm gonna see if they'll let me play with it, maybe. Uh, but yeah, I just think that's cool. It's like a giant version of a children's toy, but for actual work that you can run remotely. I think they use it for things like hazardous material waste, things that you don't want the excavator operator to risk himself so you can work it in just dangerous conditions and you don't have to worry about the risking a human life. You just put the excavator into a risky position, let it do its thing, or I've always thought a giant remote control kill dozer would be awesome, but I don't think they build that. Okay, they've, see, they've got remote control for dozers. Hear me out. You know in Ukraine where they're all stuck in these trenches, what if we just remote controlled like 40 D11 cats, armored them up like the kill dozer, and just sent a giant wall of remote control dozers through the minefield? Like, if you can't get through the trenches with a 40 D11 pushing blade to blade, just against the enemy trench, like, come on, let's do it. Has, has nobody talked about giant remote control dozers for military uses? Put some M2 Medusas on the top of those things remote controlled, like, why has that not been done? Please, that would be so sweet to have remote control kill dozers for literal applications. Yeah, it's pretty well the same as running a hole. It's exactly the same as running a hole. All right. I have the grade control. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I've never played around. Okay, with. so go out, stretch out, and pretend you're going to come in and. Oh, that's do a weird. Skip. Okay. Cut this down on the ground. That. All right. We're right down to 
there. Oh, okay. So I want you to try something. Don't trust okay. it. Okay. Keep this hand off the stick. Okay. Pull that one back. See your boom? Whoa. It's cut and grade to within two centimeters there. Really? Yeah. I preset it up so guys didn't bust through my... No, grade, that, that my makes sense. Yeah. There, right? And then but the curl... Oh. You can just take control and pick it up and do what you want, but I just do that so you can see. And it will not let you bust through the grade. Huh. So... It's weird not having the feedback. <laughs> I know. It took me, can't so, recommend, 40 hours. Yeah. Um, so I just I put this one. down. Do not look at this. This is just a slight camera. Yeah. Just focus just on Just on that, on that guy. Yeah. And then I, oh, all I got to do is pull this back. Yeah. And just hold her back. I can take a not so good operator and make them productive in a few days. And this, this is a standard feature on all cat next gen excavators. It's not like the, the grade control. Oh, yeah? So anything that I can operate in the machine, I can operate from this command station. And I can operate machines anywhere in the world. I'm only limited by my network. Anywhere in the world? Anywhere in the world, and I can have five machines connected to this station at one time. So if I wanted to dig a net and push it out with the dozer, I can switch over as quickly as I can use my mouse. So has the military gotten any of these yet? Uh, <laughs> or is he not allowed to say that? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of guys in green uniforms when I'm down at the testing facility. I would imagine so, 100%. Like, because like I'm thinking like this is probably for people that are working in dangerous environments, yeah. things where like you don't want to go under I don't know like a steel mill that's got molten stuff and you're cleaning out underneath there would be we perfect. Have, we have a customer here that uh, runs a loader inside of a building that houses lead concentrate. Oh, okay. So the operator from the heavy metal contamination. That makes sense. Right. Uh, I have other customers that work around tailing spots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, the operator yeah. Right? Well, then military is probably perfect for that. And the... Uh, <laughs> that is... Yeah, I tried sending her down yeah. a little heavy there, and it, it just stopped. And like, no, you're not allowed to... And I have a... There's a feature in here called E-Fence. So let's say if we're working under power lines. Yeah. And I want to maintain, say, a four-meter distance from the power line. I can set that in here that the tip of the boom, or it doesn't matter, whatever the highest card is, will not break through that, say, five meter mark. Oh, so it works the opposite way, too. Yeah. Like, hey, you're not going to get near the. Or if you're working in traffic and you don't want to swing out into traffic accidentally, you gotta, I can set that up, too, for your swing. Okay. Oh, I'll hop off. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Come back later. Oh, yeah, you bet. I'll just stick her down on the ground, I guess. Thanks, buddy. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't mind having a little thing like this compared to the old toy. Like someday, someday we can dream that we can have a nice new piece of equipment instead of like a 30-year-old backhoe. Like I bet the hydraulic cylinders on this thing don't leak. I, I honestly, I bet you could run one of these things and instead of um, worrying about the backhoe and be like, oh, I got to just reach, run this attachment in order to use this part of the attachment because my ball results are all blowing out and I don't have time to fix O-rings, I bet this thing just works. What yeah, chair and a cooler? I didn't see theirs on there. You never get the cooler. I've won the cooler before, you never get the cooler. They brought me down to, the uh, spinning cat brought me down to Snala Hills for a uh, product display like down in Arizona. And I won first place out of the competition. Like you had to run a backhoe, an excavator, a loader, a skid steer, and they had like little challenges. And as time event, got first place for the operator challenge. First place got a cooler, and never got the cooler. What? Yeah, it's been three years. I never the cooler never showed up. They were supposed to ship from Arizona. They never shipped in Canada. And come see it. The cooler and the chair aren't even on that. It, it, it was a cat cooler. It was that cooler, and it had a giant American flag. And everyone thought it was hilarious that the Canadian won the giant American flag cat cooler. But they never sent the American flag cat cooler there to Canada, so I never got it. So the cooler is a lie. The cooler will never show up. <laughs> and to be before I toot my own about being a good operator placing first, I went down there with power systems, so I was competing against a bunch of people that had never ran heavy equipment before. But I got first. In the cat heavy equipment rodeo, I placed first. If you don't count that I was competing against power system engineers. <laughs> Give her a spin here. I think you spin it and then it stops yeah. somewhere. You got a toque. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Ready? Hey, you got Give her a spin. All right. What are you hoping for? I'm going for the toque too. Ha! Another hat. 
Look at all this swag. Okay, I got a hat, this hat, I got two, and I got some sweet sunglasses. We got a free burger and a free burger. This place is sweet. Yeah, get out of the way here. We're doing a big interview, you know? <laughs> all right, Matt's up. What, do you, what are our options? Hat, shirt, draw entry, hat, license plate. Well, golf balls, I'll so, lose those on the first shot, so we're not going to worry yeah, about so those what babies. You, what are you hoping for? Well, I'm thinking maybe that cooler filled with grease would be a good idea. Some grease? Well, you put grease on it. Okay. <laughs> the only one that's excited about a cooler full of grease. Cooler's a lot Oh, let's see what we win here. We got the shirt. Shirt, there we go. Did it? Uh oh. Oh, it's probably skinny guy sizes. Oh my God. <laughs> wow, that'll give me something to look, you know, to strive towards fitting into this shirt. <laughs> yeah, I've never really ran an excavator too much, but I ran log loader loading trucks. So I feel like that's pretty similar. You want to bring your camera over here and get a an overview of this thing before we? Yeah. Yeah. So Chase and Theron. This is so much smoother than our old ass backhoe. You know, when you're on something like this, you really, really appreciate that people aren't using backhoes from the 90s and 80s. Imagine the amount of work you could do if all of your hydraulics actually work like they should. Like one day, one day a fella can dream. These cat demo days are fantastic. Like where else do you get free hot dogs, free water, have a few things, throw some dirt around, play around in an excavator. Like these are the greatest things you can possibly go to. All right, I can think that's some people lined up. That thing is so slick. Oh, that's so nice. So, hey, Cameron. So, so slick, how many do you want? How many do you want to buy today? Oh, at least one. You know? <laughs>